Hi. 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 Hello. Hey. Hey. So we were sitting back, relaxing, chatting about what we wanted to do a video on this week. And we just started talking about how many plants are in the apartment and how we're decorating with the plants. And like, I was talking about how I've had to move things around a lot this winter and it doesn't look as cute as it looked before, but that's something I've learned as a plant parent that it's not always gonna look cute because some plants need the, what they need and they need to move into the yes. sun. I've always wanted to know how to decorate with plants and I want to, <sighs> that skill, you see. Oh, like I wanna hone it, hmm. that's the word. Uh, and so I wanted Kiki to chat about how she does it and um, hopefully inspire some more folks. So yeah. what I want to do today is talk about the three main ways that I like to decorate with plants and then show you a couple of my favorite examples around the apartment to give maybe you some inspo at home on how you can decorate with plants in your own space. La do it. There are three main ways that I have out of my brain categorized for the way that I've decorated the apartment. So the first one is a statement plant and it could be a big plant or it could be just a very eye-catching plant. And I'm gonna show you a couple of my favorites. Obviously this is huge and this is kind of the anchor. Makes a statement. Room. Makes a statement. Um, if you have been following me on Instagram at the Jungle Upstairs for a while, you probably know that he is my fickle friend that I've had a lot of ups and downs over the years. And it's a nice way to anchor the room, give some greenery, and if you don't want a ton of plants, you just want something that makes a statement and is kind of this living, breathing, growing, beautiful piece of art in your home, I would recommend something like a fiddle leaf fig, a corn plant. I had this monstera that was huge that we have, we have, I was going to say sadly cut down. We didn't really sadly cut it down because we were happy to cut it down. We we're going to bring it back. But um, even like a large snake plant, like the snake plant that we have is not huge, but big and kind of makes a statement and brings the eye sort of to this moment, this like curated moment that you want people to look at. Two, is trailing plants because you can hang them, you can put them on shelves, you can make them look really, really cool and do interesting things with them. The Scandepsis pictus is a actually coming out of this small six inch pot. We have tons of vines growing across the wall. A lot of people are always curious if it does this on its own and ask why theirs isn't because I use scotch tape. It's not natural. <laughs> I had them hanging down, but what I did was I started using little pieces of scotch tape that wouldn't hurt the vines and taping them up. And now it's been like this for two years and it keeps growing. It was starting to grow all the way around the room, but Molly mixed that pretty quick. <laughs> but what's really nice about this is it kind of is almost like wallpaper or like a mural. And it's just like a very interesting way to draw the eye across the room. And I'll show you one more example of uh, a trailing plant that I've used almost as decor. Hello! <laughs> this is the, probably the worst example because right now our apartment is a kind of a disaster and we're moving all these books around and usually this bookshelf is designed in a little bit more aesthetically pleasing way versus just like a shit ton of books just stuck on here. But the principle of the fact, and I hope that you can be with me on this and understand the what I'm, the macro level story that I'm trying to tell here, but I have this little plant and this is a pothos. And this has been actually, this was the first plant that I bought when I moved to New York City 10 over, oh my gosh, it's been over 10 years now. My anniversary just passed, but they, uh, this is like a very fast growing plant and I've cut it back a bazillion times. But what I really just liked was I kind of started weaving the vines around this bookshelf and turned it into kind of this framing for the shelf itself. Don't love the shelf. Hopefully we're gonna get a new shelf soon, but we'll do something similar. The, the gist is I love being able to use trailing plants to frame something that's really beautiful like this. And don't be afraid to move the vines around because they, you know, you're as long as you're not snapping anything or breaking anything, they will end up 
growing and sort of flowing in the direction that you give them. Can you tell that I'm being accosted right now? Eat 100%. <laughs> Anyways, my point is, and then we're going to get out of this umbrella. <laughs> um, if you do want to try doing something like this and you're like, oh, but it doesn't bend that way. Just start bending it. Just like, you know, use some sort of like tape or something to start bending it this direction. Over time and with the sun and growth, it'll start to go in that direction and it'll eventually do what you want it to. You just have to be patient and give it kind of a guide and then it will turn into this sort of beautiful frame. And the third is just clustering plants. Um, when you cluster plants together that are similar in their needs, it actually creates kind of a microclimate, which I learned in the past couple Molly. Molly's face behind the camera right now is her eyes are rolling so hard, but it's actually true. And when you decorate, you want to find plants that actually have similar needs. So if you cluster plants that need a lot of sun and a lot of water, then you have a nice cluster in the window. And then if you have some plants that are like not really as thirsty and they don't need as much humidity, you can cluster them on a shelf. This is an overwhelming example for someone who doesn't want to be drowning in a jungle of plants like Molly, but mm -hmm. Finding like-minded plants that like the same thing and clustering them around, like I've got peperomia, 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 one, two, three, four more peperomias, and then I've got a watermelon peperomia here. Basically, clustering plants together is healthy for them, and it's really cute because it's you can kind of build your own little jungly area. Um, he's peeing on... No, he's not. Yes, he's peeing on the no. mirror. So he's done being everywhere. That was shocking. That, that was, shocking. was unique. Um, he has not peed on a mirror before. I think that, that and was not an act so blatantly. That was an act of violence. We hope that some of this was helpful and inspired you to, you know, decorate your own place, get some plants of your own. Um, I hope that your partners come to this decision with you. Um, I never gave an okay on the cluster approach. No, she did not. But it seems we're big on that here. So I also, as we started talking through, I realized that there are a lot more categories. So there might be a part two. Hanging plants? Is that their own category? We have the Maybe. Do we need a part two? Let us know. Yeah, you tell us. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And on that note, we're going to try to teach Louie how to tell us he has to pee with a bell. Yeah. We are going to, our friend told us that their dog rings a bell when they have to go to the bathroom. That so sounds very We're going to try to do that instead of him trotting in and peeing on a mirror to tell us. Yeah. Then it's like a little too late.